Hi students, coming to the uh, different types of software life cycle models. So the first one is the waterfall model. The first waterfall model is waterfall model. So here in the waterfall model, you are having different phases, requirement analysis, system design, implementation, testing, deployment and maintenance. So the waterfall model, this is the first software development life cycle model to be used widely in software engineering to ensure success of the project. So uh, almost all the software engineers are used to uh, use this waterfall model. So in the approach, the whole process of software development is divided into separate phases. Suppose if any uh, process is there, if any product is there, if any problem is there, that problem is divided into series of phases, a different phases. Here, the outcome of one phase acts as an input to the other phase. The outcome of requirement analysis acts to the input. Outcome of require, uh, uh, system design, input to implementation. Outcome of implementation is input to testing. Testing is deployment. Outcome of deployment is maintenance. And it is input to the maintenance. This is outcome of one phase is acts as an input uh, for the next phase. That should be in sequential. Now let us see. Uh, and one thing you have to remember that once if one phase is completed then only you go for the next phase without the completion of the first uh, before phase you are not supposed to go for the next phase once it is freeze next go for the next phase once it is freeze next go for the next phase like that we have to follow like so that's why we call it as a waterfall model water first drop here it next it comes to next uh, stage next comes stage if you drop the water the stages will be changing from high to low whenever we are pouring a water from uh, terrace so first it reaching first day, uh, fifth floor next to fourth next third like that it is coming down so like that it has to uh, follow like that now first see the requirement analysis what do you mean by this requirement analysis so here the requirement gathered and documented in a requirement specification document so whatever the user's requirements suppose i am saying to the uh, person means i want uh, these are the specifications i need the output like this i want the product like this i am going to uh, run an app like this so you are giving some specification and ideas to the team people okay that you call it as a requirement analysis that will be uh, write it in a documented and they are saved so whatever the user requirement and what are the customer requirements that will be first documented after that the system design the system design helps in specifying uh, hardware and the system requirements and also defining overall system architecture means what type of hardware we have to use and whatever the requirements that uh, system requirements that we need and also defining overall system architecture to develop a complete system whatever whatever they need that you call it as a system design so that will be designed in, in this phase okay i know the documentation i had seen the hardware components also next they go for the implementation so in the implementation with input from system design so whatever the input that we are taking from the system design the system is developed in small programs called units so here we are implementing the program into small units okay so here each unit is tested for its functionality and it is referred as unit testing means we are writing a code and we are testing that each unit by using unit testing so that everything will be come the, under the implementation okay my product is over and it is every unit uh, small programs are tested and it is successful so that will be uh, checking in this testing after that deployment okay so in testing and here you can also call it as integration and testing let me write one more point integration integration and testing so here i am making the program small programs small programs call unit units so each unit we are testing so after that you have to combine all units that you call it as integration all units are integrated and test complete product for any faults and failures in this phase so next they come for the deployment deployment is nothing but once the functional and non-functional testing is done okay everything was done 
the testing and the functional non functional everything is done okay my product is completely fit then you are ready to deliver the product to the customer environment or you directly releasing into the market that stage you call it as deployment okay i released everything and my product is now running in the market and uh, my customer is using so even though if your project is over your product was deliver if any issues come up from the client environment you have to be fix those problems and also if they want any enhancement to that product you have to add that and you have to release it again that stage you call it as a maintenance so the maintenance stage will be occurred in the customer environment only client or customer environment so maintenance stage will be done on the customer environment so if you issues comes in the client environment so those will be fixed and that you call it as a maintenance so these are the different stages in the uh, waterfall model first requirements system design implementation integration and testing deployment and the maintenance now let us see the advantages and disadvantages of using a waterfall model advantages so first thing it is simple and easy to understand and use okay and next it is easy to manage also easy to manage and each phase has a specific delivery and review for process next phases or proceed phases or proceed and completed one at a time so means once if if one phase is completed then only you are supposed to go for the next phase so phase or proceeded and completed one at a time next here the requirements are very well understood in waterfall model requirements are very well understood and it is easy to arrange task also and it is clearly defined stages clearly defined stages so these are all the advantages of using the waterfall model now let us see the disadvantages the disadvantage in using a uh, waterfall model is uh, no working software is produced until late during the life cycle that is one and the next uh, let me write that no working software is produced until late during life cycle so if you follow the waterfall model so this is a problem they came across and the high amount of risk and uncertainty will be there high amount of risk and uncertainty will be there in waterfall model and it is not good uh, model for complex and object oriented programs not good for um, object oriented program and uh, and it is also complex it is not good uh, model for complex and object oriented programs and this is a poor model for uh, large and ongoing projects poor model for large uh, and ongoing projects so these are the advantages and disadvantages of using the waterfall model thank you